first of all, uh, May uh, Anne Then, who is representing the International Forestry Students Association, um, is going to give us some perhaps cautionary words on behalf of um, the world's youngsters. Uh, uh, and then uh, we'll return to Joran Persson, uh, Think Forest's president, for his concluding remarks. And I think after that, Ulla is going to give us some practical instructions uh, regarding the, uh, the, the drinks to follow. Yeah. May I? Good afternoon, everyone. I think I was introduced as the president of the International Forestry Students Association, um, and so I don't have to repeat that. Um, but I'd like to maybe frame it a little bit differently. I'm not representing the youth of the world. I think that's too big of a task for me to handle today. Um, and I've only been given five minutes. So perhaps you'll allow me that, to just That was share. your commission, I think. Okay. <laughs> um, so perhaps you'll allow me to share three points of reflection um, that I've had about addressing the realities of climate change. And I think I'm stepping back a little bit from the conversations that we've been having today, which has been focused very much on forestry um, in the European context. And so I think the first point I'd like to raise is that we should listen, and to listen well, to the many voices in the development agenda. IFSA as an organization began in Europe as a network for forestry students, and now has members from all around the world. And every year we have a student symposium where we come together and share with one another about our experiences. And this past year it was held in the Philippines. And there I think some of us got to see firsthand poverty-stricken communities struggling to adapt to the realities of super typhoons, now feared to be a regular occurrence. And this is just one of many examples of the very real impacts of climate change on human livelihoods, a very clear link between climate change and the development agenda. These realities of climate injustice are lived daily for many vulnerable communities around the world. And to them, climate justice is about looking at the development agenda with climate change as a contextual reality. Forests are important, and we've heard that many, many times today, and I couldn't agree more. But for other parts of the world, they are only as important when it plays in the context of the development agenda as well, not just climate change. So I think even in Europe, we must think of these realities and be daringly ambitious with the shared responsibility of climate change and how it impacts the rest of the world. Secondly, I'd like to highlight something that I think someone in the audience had already mentioned, and it's called the landscapes approach, which is a holistic way of looking at land not as distinctly characterizable parcels, but one interconnected and interdependent landscape, taking into account environmental, social, economic aspects in policy and practice, and acknowledges the responsibilities of individuals, communities, and policymakers as well. At the individual and community level, I think it's also about gaining a more holistic understanding of the way we eat, drink, travel, consume energy, and seeing each individual and community as potential land managers in a larger landscape. At the policy level, I think it is understanding that human flourishing is inherently connected to a well-managed and efficient landscape, including agricultural lands, forests, watersheds, recreational spaces, and others. It argues that natural resource management, conservation, consumption patterns, economic trade, etc., are all related and need to be considered together. For Europe, I think it's important to consider forests not as an isolated sector, but part of a holistic landscape with benefits um, that extends beyond. Lastly, I think it's incredibly important to have meaningful engagement um, in youth, with youth in climate conversations. The realities of climate change isn't just something that we will inherit, this is a reality that we are living and growing up with right now. I think it needs to begin with adapting education systems. Children and youth, whether in urban or rural areas, need to grow up and learn about climate realities and the role of forests and other types of land use in a way that wasn't necessary in our parents' generations. More than ever before, learning how to be good stewards of the finite resources that Earth has provided are as important as learning the theories of algebra and trigonometry. I think it also includes meaningful engagement of youth in decision making. This means valuing youth voices and perspectives in policies and implementation projects. Youth are resourceful, highly motivated, innovative, and can bring creativity to the entire process. They can share their powerful hopes for the future, the future that you all say we'll inherit, and help come up with solutions that they can help carry out. And so to conclude, I think 
all the complex factors that feed into climate change are interconnected. So the solutions to them needs to have a landscape approach. It includes European forests in its global context. It needs to involve all its affected stakeholders, including youth, and consider the different realities that communities around the world face in the development agenda. So thank you very much for giving me this space. I'm incredibly honored to share it with you. Thank you.